Hallelujah. You, I'm going to start in Acts chapter 1. I do thank you, Lord, for utterance today. Now, I haven't talked to Andy about, I don't think we talked about anything spiritual or anything uh, where the Word is concerned at all this past week. But I thought it was interesting because the Word and God's got where He does this on a level that I've never experienced before. And that is, he just gave me a word, and the word was power. The word was power. Well, when you think about power, the first thing that comes to my mind is the power of the Holy Ghost. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about this morning, is the ministry of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 1, we'll just cut in on verse 3. And Jesus, of course, is speaking to his disciples here. And it says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, this is after the resurrection, and Jesus has appeared to his disciples, and he began to speak to them concerning what? The kingdom of God. And being assembled together. Oh, my. Everybody say assembled together. And if something happens when you assemble together, uh-huh. that's why God, God must have known that. That's why he said, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Wait for the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? The promise of the Father was, we'll see here. For John truly baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The promise of the Father was the baptism, it says baptized, with the Holy Ghost. Now, of course, there's three baptisms spoken of in the Scripture. The first one that comes to mind, of course, is water baptism, but that was an, act of, uh, an expression of an inward work because the first baptism you experienced was a baptism into the body of Christ. That was by Holy Ghost. And then the third uh, baptism is the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking another tongue. So many religious teachings get these things so confused. But he said, and when... And they therefore were come together. They asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now, <laughs> it's amazing. I've been reading through the Old Testament. And my goodness, you got one king and he's good, and the next king he's evil. You got one generation God's blessing and another one he's cursing. Amen. And it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all through all through the, the, the Old Testament. And so now they're under Roman rule. They were ruled over by several different nations at several different times. But now, as this has been written, it was, they were under Roman rule. And so the disciples, him being Jesus being the Messiah, they thought that he had come to deliver them, that is Israel, out of the hands of the Romans and to set them free again. But notice what he said, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive what? But ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power after, after, after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, I believe that this is going to be first step in a series. I don't do a lot of series, but we need to know more about the Holy Ghost. The first thing I want to, the first thought, I've got three, three uh, points here. And the first one, I want to, we need to talk about and think about who the Holy Ghost is. He is, now we call him the third person of the Godhead because we believe in the Trinity. 
We believe in Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and we have scripture for that. Amen. We know that God the Father, He planned, He planned, well, He planned the earth, but He planned uh, our redemption. It was in His divine plan, the Father. Then Jesus executed that plan by going to the cross, shedding His blood for us. And the Holy Ghost is who reveals it to us. See, there's a lot of people that this hasn't been revealed to because they haven't allowed the Holy Ghost to teach them, for He is the teacher, and He is the one that testifies and witnesses of Jesus. He's the one that teaches us who Jesus is. He reveals it because He is a revelator. Now, I'm going to talk about for a fact here that He is a person. He's not an it. He's not a thing. He's not a vapor. He's not a cloud that floats around. Amen. He is a real person. A real person. He has a personality. They are attributes that are manifested by him. Personality uh, attributes. Now let's look. In Romans 8, 27... It says, he that knoweth the mind of the Spirit, he that searcheth the mind of the Spirit, he that knoweth the mind of the Spirit, the mind of the Spirit. So he has a mind. I said he has a mind. Yes. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when he talks about the gifts of the Spirit, he said that they are divided amongst the church severally as he wills. So he has a mind and he has a, a will. And then in Ephesians 4, 30, it says he can be grieved. Grieved means to cause to suffer. Holy Ghost, you know what that is? Emotions. Holy Ghost is a person. And what it takes to make a person is a, is a mind, a will, and emotions. In Isaiah 63, 10, it talks about the fact that he had been vexed. They vexed him. Israel vexed him, and that means to trouble or to disturb. Did you know that we can grieve, that is to cause the Holy Ghost to suffer? Did you know that we can vex him? Now that doesn't sound right to the natural mind, does it? I'm reading this out of the Bible. So he has a mind, a will, and emotions. Holy Ghost is God. The Father is God. The Son is God. Jesus is, well, is and was God, even though he took on all the characteristics of a man as a child of Abraham. He never ceased to be God. He, he was second person of the Godhead, even though he operated in a fleshly body. Holy Ghost is omnipotent. That means he is all-powerful. Well, is God all-powerful? Yes, he is. The same thing can be said about Holy Ghost as it can be said about God, the Father, the Son. He is omnipresent. That means he is, can be and is everywhere all the time. He's here. He's here. He's everywhere. Yes. Amen. He's not just located in certain churches or certain religions. Amen. Or in certain people. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. Means that he knows everything. He is all knowing. Well, you're not going to know everything about him, but he sure knows everything about you. And he knows everything that you need to pray out concerning the mysteries that Andy was talking about. He can, Acts 5, 3, Ananias and Sapphira, the word said he can be lied to. Now, isn't that crazy? Try to lie to God. But you, he, the Holy Ghost can be lied to. Acts 7, 5, 
He can be resisted. You can resist the Holy Ghost. When he's trying to lead you, he's trying to keep, teach you, he's trying to, to guide you. And yet we like our religious thinking and our theology, hello, and we cling to that. And by clinging to that, people don't realize what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're resisting him. People that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues, they are resisting him. How you cannot, I don't get it. I'm sorry. I just don't get it. When I was, when I was born again, I wanted all of God. When I was, actually, when I surrendered, I was born again. Actually, when I was 10 years old, but when I really surrendered, uh, that's when I say I got saved because that's when salvation really began to take place in my life. And that was in the fall of 1970, and I was 21 years old. And I was hungry for God. I was hungry. And I knew about the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues because the church I had, been, and there's a Baptist church. And the pastor was uh, Gilbert Standridge. And while we were attending that church, he got filled with the Holy Ghost, began to operate in the power of God. People began, began other people began to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and started speaking in tongues. One guy told me that he was down praying one night in this church when this move of God was going on in this Baptist church, Franklin Springs Baptist Church. He was down praying one night, and all of a sudden he heard somebody speaking in some other language. He said it sounded like German or something like that, and then it dawned on him. He realized it was coming out of him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's the kind of things that begin to happen. But you know what? Even with all the power, all the anointing, all the, the I mean, people being slain in the Spirit, people being filled with the Holy Ghost, people being healed and delivered, there were people in that church that resisted the Holy Ghost. How do you think that made Holy Ghost feel? Well, all these people that don't believe in Him and refuse to be filled with Him, let me tell you something, they are resisting Him. They may not know it because they've been religiously brainwashed, but they are resisting him. He can be blasphemed. Isn't that right? Yes, Jesus said you can get away with a lot of things. You can blaspheme me, but if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there's no repentance. And it means the act of offense. In other words, the Holy Ghost can be offended. He can be quenched. First Thessalonians 5:19. That means to extinguish a fire. Did you know you can you can hinder the work, a work of the Holy Ghost? I mean, Holy Ghost. It, 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 there's a fire that goes with Him. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost in fire. You see that in the Scripture. Jesus said, "He that cometh." It will baptize you in the, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But that fire can be quenched. Holy Ghost can be quenched. That means the fire of the Holy Ghost can be put out. You know, <clears throat> Holy Ghost operates by faith. You don't believe in Him, then you're resisting Him. You're, you're quenching the fire and the power in your life. Now in John the 14th chapter. Because I'm not going to take long this morning. Because you know I've been trying to cut back. But I'll get these three points. And then we'll move on. In John 14 <coughs> verse 16. <coughs> excuse me. Now, these are some of the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. And he said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Everybody say comforter. Do you know what the Greek says about that, what it means? It is from the Greek word paraclete, and it means he that is called alongside to help. In other words, you're not in this by yourself. You have the Holy Ghost. If you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, He is here to help you. Amen. He'll help you pray. 
He'll help you make the right decisions. He'll help you minister. He'll help you witness. He is the helper. But he's going to help you. The word help, comforter is paraclete. And this that King James chose the word comforter. But it also means an advocate. You know what an advocate is? That's a defense attorney. A, attorney. You know, when the, when the enemy, uh, you know, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And he's going to accuse you. He's going to accuse you whether you've done anything or not. You know, <laughs> uh, I, used to, I used to do a lot of fasting. But I could never do enough. I mean, the devil accused me. He should have did more. <laughs> you make any difference how much you pray. The accuser's going to tell you you didn't pray enough or you didn't pray right. But you have an advocate. You've got a defense attorney that goes before the judge and he calls you innocent. He calls you not guilty. Yes, sir. You have a defense attorney. Yes, sir. He is an intercessor. That's what this word means now. He's an intercessor. He is a go-between. Yes, Amen. He will go between the operation of the devil in your life. He will, he will step in the middle of that and stop that. Amen. He's an intercessor. He's a strengthener. Has anybody ever needing any strength? Where's that strength come from? And let me just stop here and say the Holy Ghost. He fills your spirit, not your head, not your soul, not your mind. Your, uh, he doesn't fill your body. He fills your spirit, the real you, which lives in a body. Amen. All right. He is a standby. You can always depend on him. He doesn't go anywhere. Amen. He's always there. And he is our counselor. Yes, and if we would listen to him and spend time with him and pray and fellowship with him, we wouldn't need near as much counseling. As a matter of fact, I've done counseling over the years. And most of the time, see, I don't tell people what to do. I try to help them find out what to do. And most of the time, they already know what to do. Because they already have a counselor on the inside of them that showed them. Amen. Now I want to talk to you about Jesus' baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I'll go to Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 3. We doing all right? Oh, I can just help you, help all of us to see, oh my goodness, how real he is, that he is a real person. And he lives in your spirit. Now, let me say this. Because some teach or have, most people don't these days, but there's been a lot of teaching, wrong teaching. And some people have thought that you can't go to heaven uh, or you can't be saved unless you speak with tongues. Well, no, you can be born again and receive a spirit that's like God, a born again spirit. But there's a difference in being born of the spirit and being filled with the Spirit. It's very distinct in the Scriptures, and maybe we'll get into some of that. There also is such a thing as the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. We might even look at that today. All right, Luke chapter uh, 3, verse 21. And when all the people were baptized, it came to, pe to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said thou art my beloved son and whom I am well pleased well that's Trinity isn't it you got the son that's being baptized you got the Holy Spirit that came on him and then you have the father speaking to him yes, sir. amen this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. And this was when Jesus was 30 years old. Now, I have to understand that when Jesus was born, he wasn't born with a sin nature like you and I were born with. 
he was conceived of a virgin and he was born spiritually alive as though he had been born again as, as we are. And then in the fourth chapter of Luke, verse 1 says, and being full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's right. You know, if Jesus needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if he needed to, to be full of the Holy Ghost, then looks like we ought to have to be to fulfill destiny and purpose. And notice this, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Notice that once he was filled with the Holy Ghost, he began to be led. But now in Luke chapter 4, 14, and Jesus returned in the power. Everybody say power. power. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit or the power of of the Holy Ghost, and they went out of fame concerning him. And then, uh, in, in uh, the fourth chapter, in the 18th verse, he said this, the Spirit of the Lord, now he's filled. So the Spirit of the Lord is also upon me. Jesus is preaching this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. He hath anointed me. What kind of anointing did he have? The anointing of the Holy Ghost that he received down at Jordan. Right. Amen. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Before Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost, he had not healed anybody. He had not cast out any devils. He was 30 years old, had done no miracles. Hello. Hello. Well, he was just as much God when he was 29 years old as he was when he was 30 years old. But he could not do any works because he hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost. Hello out there. Notice he began, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Thank God he, he does. And to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay? Acts 10, 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was Jesus Christ. Christ wasn't his last name. Christ means the anointed one. Jesus, the anointed one. He, he was anointed as a man. He was God the whole time. But as a man, he was limited in what he could do in his humanity uh, until the Holy Ghost came upon him and he became filled with the Holy Ghost and he could begin to fulfill his purpose. Right. Amen. And his destiny. Yes, Are we doing all right? Yes, then in Acts 2, 4, and I'm talk about the Holy Ghost in you and me. He said, remember we read, he'd be, you'd be filled, the disciples would be filled with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So at that particular time, they weren't filled. Hello? But in Acts 2, 4, it says that on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, they were all gathered together in one accord, and there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and tongues of fire lit upon each one of them. And they all began to speak with tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak. I've heard people say, I got all of God that you can have, but I don't speak with tongues. No, honey, let me tell you something. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost unless you are speaking in tongues because that is the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost coming into you. And we can get into that when we, we go, but all through the te New Testament, the only p 
people, everybody that was filled with the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues. In John 14, in John 14, we're going to look at verse 17, or 16 actually. Jesus said to his disciples, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. Notice he said that you, he will abide with you forever. They had never had that before. There were people, special people, kings and priests and prophets in the Old Testament that the Spirit of God, that the Holy Ghost would come upon them just for a season to give a word or to work a miracle or to do something pertaining to the kingdom and the church which was to come. So the Holy Ghost would come on them, but he didn't stay on them. He would come and he would go. And the reason was that God only lives in what he designed, and their spirit had not been designed or recreated, amen, until that you were born again. When you were born again, then now the Holy Ghost has a home to live in. Hello? That's your spirit. Yes, that he may abide with you forever, not just coming and going. Even the spirit of truth, Holy Ghost, spirit of truth, the world cannot receive. Now, you know, he can't be talking about a new nature because the world can receive a new nature. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. But he said, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him talking to the disciples, for he dwelleth, watch this, with you. Holy Ghost wasn't in them, not at this time. He said, for he dwelleth with you. How did he dwell with them? Through Jesus. Jesus, he imparted what was on him at times, but it was always temporary. For he dwelleth with you, but guess what? Thank God, thank God. He shall be in you. Are we doing okay? Yes, All right. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And he goes on to say, if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. The Holy Ghost won't come. See, Jesus was here, and he left. Second second person of the Godhead, he went back to the Father. Amen? Yes, so now he's gone. Now it's the Holy Ghost's turn to operate in the earth and to reveal Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> verse, we already read verse 17. Now where is, and I'm talking about the believer now. Did you know that now he dwells in you? Everybody say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost dwells, in dwells in me. Now, not just, see, you can say Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. There's only one Greek word, and that's pneuma, so it doesn't make any difference. I like Holy Ghost because that's what I came up with. Many say Holy Spirit. That's perfectly fine. We all know what we're talking about. Amen. But then in Ephesians chapter 3, it says this. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can ask or think. I can think pretty big. I can talk pretty good, pretty big. He says now to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? In us. Power to get wealth. Power to receive anything and everything that God has for us. He said, you will see power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, I want to look in, uh, and we'll, we'll finish up with this. In 1 John, Chapter 20. Now there was a, a doctrine that was coming into the church. It was the doctrine of Gnosticism. And that doctrine said 
that Jesus was never a real human being. He was just a phantom. And so John is dealing with that error, right. that heresy. And that's what he's talking about here. He said, but ye have an unction. The word unction in the Greek is anointing. But ye have an unction or an anointing from where? The Holy One. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. We have the same anointing that Jesus had. Amen. You have the same power in you that Jesus had in him. Amen. Because you have the same Holy Ghost. Yes, but ye have an unction or anointing from the Holy Ghost and you know all things. One translation, you all know the truth. What he's talking about, what he's talking about here is you know the truth about Jesus. Matter of fact, he's 27th verse. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. Hallelujah. And you need not that any man teach you. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about a secular person teaching you a doctrine or teaching you anything from a, a different spirit or even out of their intellect. You need not that any man teach you. It doesn't mean you don't have teachers in the body of Christ. But even the teachers, the Holy Ghost is going to teach you what I say. I'm called a teacher. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is in you witnessing the truth, for he is the spirit of truth. Yes, amen. amen. Holy Ghost in you will let you know, yes. amen, and teach you yes. that what I'm saying is truth. Yes, and thank God for the Holy Ghost because he also will let you know when something is not truth. Yes, it might sound good, yes, amen, yes, but it doesn't mean it's truth. Yes, you have the spirit of truth living on the inside of you. Notice that he said, and you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing, that's Holy Ghost, teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie, even as it hath been taught, you, you have been taught, you shall abide in him. In Matthew 10, 1, see, you have the Holy Ghost in you. As a matter of fact, I want to go over there. This, When I first came into the kingdom, man, I, I quoted this a hundred times because I wanted power. I wanted power. I've always sought God, and I don't understand people that don't seek. I mean, I sought God. Back in those days, you tarried. And so you go down, and people, they pray for you and just say this, say that. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, say it real fast. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do everything, try to get you filled. You have to tarry for the Holy Ghost. Well, you don't tarry anymore after Pentecost, okay? But, because I wanted the power. And praise God, I got it. Amen. Amen. And this is one of the scriptures that I used to quote all the time. And when he had called unto him his disciples, that's Jesus, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Did you know if you have the Holy Ghost, you can cast out a devil? Yes. Amen. Amen. Against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. These signs shall follow them that believe. Did you know you can lay hands on the sick? And, then, and, 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 he, and be, they'll be healed. Did you know you can cast out a devil? Jesus, man, watch this. Jesus called them together, and imparted to them what was on him. But now it didn't stay because it wasn't in their spirit. It just came upon their body and their spirit. Hello? Now, 
again, we may talk about later, the spirit within and the spirit upon. The Holy Ghost in you to work in you is primarily to teach you. He teaches you. He teaches you truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. He teaches you that's his ministry to you as an individual. So you can expect to be taught. You can, be, you can expect to understand the word. You can, you can expect to do that. Why? Why? Because you have the teacher on the inside of you, and he's there to teach. He teaches you the plan, the will, and purpose of God for your life. But then when the Spirit comes upon you, that's different. That's different. The Spirit is upon me today. Well, where did he come from? <laughs> he came from inside of me. See, when he came in, when the Holy Ghost came into my spirit, he brought all his gifts with him. He brought everything that I would ever need to fulfill my purpose and destiny and to be able to minister the kingdom and live in the kingdom. It wasn't just to, just to let me feel something. What's, he, what's feeling got to do with it? A lot of times, a lot of times. I've ministered to people, laid hands on them, and I didn't feel a thing. Later on, come to find out, my God, they got delivered, they got healed, they got impartation, and I would have never known it. It's, it I just happened to stumble upon them somewhere, and because it's not a feeling. Well, was I knowing it? Yeah. How, how did that knowing get manifested? Their faith. Right. Right. Mm. The anointing is manifested through faith, operates through faith. So here I am, I'm praying using my faith and my anointing. Remember, you everyone know what you got? Everybody's got an anointing. Everybody's, you know, if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. So I'm releasing my faith, that which which releases the the anointing for healing. But the person in front of me has to believe for that anointing. They have to believe that first of all that the person doing the praying is anointed. If they don't believe that, it's not going to work. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't come down and say, I'm going to see if this will work. I'm just going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. So when the anointing comes upon you, he comes upon you for a purpose. When the Holy Ghost is in manifestation, when the Holy Ghost is being released, he's looking for a target. This morning, as I minister on the anointing, now see, I'm not anointed to preach all the time. I'll go home and I'll sit down and rest a while, maybe eat some lunch, amen, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll start my Sunday afternoon nap until Andy calls and wakes me up. <laughs> but I'm not anointed to preach there. I'm anointed to rest, okay? <laughs> But when he comes on me, and sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, he'll come on me because he wants to do something, like heal somebody or he'll give a word or something. To that effect. But he lives on the inside of us to teach us and for us to use our faith. You know, in the Scripture even says we may all prophesy. Okay. Amen. Prop when, I'm telling you, when Holy Ghost came in you, he brought the gifts with him. He brought everything that you're going to need to fulfill purpose and to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So there's, the, there's, the, uh, uh, there's being born of the Spirit. They've been filled with the Spirit. And then there's the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. I love it when he comes upon me. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Won't you go ahead and stand with me? Thank you, Jesus.